guys, it's Dr. George, and it is not Tuesday. It's Monday, but a very special Monday. It's the first day of February, and also it's Black History Month. So this is our special edition of Tucked In Tuesdays called More Than a Month. Thank you for supporting me. So it's more than a month because African-Americans do great things all year long. Here's one all year long. And so we have one month to squeeze all of that greatness in. So I challenge you to spread it out past and before February, because there's a lot of amazing things going on. So I want to say hello to my friends. Hi, Kylie. How are you? Hi, Tiana Phillips. Hello. So you say hello to me. I put your name on the screen so everybody can see my supporters. So if you want to go ahead and put a message up there. Make sure this is Mariana. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining via YouTube. That's really cool. So hello, guys. It's great, great, great. I'm so happy to have you. Hi, Joel. I know you like it when I say your name, Joel. Um, so tune in. I have two books tonight. And remember, I'll be reading every single Tuesday. Hello, Zachary. Remember, I'll be reading every single Tuesday. Hi, Miss Dukes. I have some people on my personal page. So hello, Miss Duke, one of my fifth grade professors. Hi, Miss Bridges. Miss Farron Bakker is also watching, our art teacher. Hello, hello. Put those comments in. If you put them in on Tucked in Tuesdays or the Home and Drive page, I can get it. I'm so happy. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad that you're here. So hi, Lukita. Hi, Asia Brown. Hello. I like it when you put your real name up there. So we're going to jump in. I have two books and this is my big kickoff. And if you're just joining, I said that February, we have everything squeezed into one month. Hello, Miss Macklin. My she is probably number two with literacy. I can only say that because she doesn't, people don't know how famous she is with reading. But yeah, we're like two of the same. So welcome, Ms. Macklin. So just like I said, we're squeezing all of this great things that black people and African-Americans do or African-Americans into this one month. And I challenge you to start celebrating it before February and after February, because there's a whole lot of greatness. And as I said before, as I said before, look at me. I'm doing it every week. So hi, Ms. Pilgrim, one of my second grade scholar professors, my scholars, I'm always messing up stuff with you. So I have two books. So my book, my first book is Look Up With Me. And we also have a parent involvement activity or night coming up that is for STEM, women in STEM. Girls, if you want to do something with science, this isn't about a girl, but it's about science. Make sure that you are looking into things. Hi, Miss Flowers. It's my wonderful AP jumping in. Ms. Macklin said, thank you. You're welcome, Ms. Macklin. So I'll get started. So my first book will be Look Up With Me. And this is Neil, let me hide this one. This is Neil De DeGrasse Tyson, A Life Among the Stars by Jennifer Byrne, illustrations by Lorraine Knob, and permission, remember you got to get permission, to read is from Harper Collins Publisher. So hello, and hello, Sophie, if you're watching. Hello. So here it goes. So the introduction is written by Neil himself. He's an astrophysicist in New York City. So these are his words. He said most grown-ups have forgotten what it was like to be a kid. Mm-hmm. Some of y'all did. I do it sometimes too. I do. Hi, Miss Napinski, one of my first grade professors. Some don't remember on purpose, hurrying life along as fast as they can. For others, memories of being a kid simply faded from view. I'm a full grown, grown up. In fact, I'm so grown up that I have grown up kids of my own, but I still feel like a kid. I felt like a kid my entire life. Why? Because I'm a scientist. Scientists are kids who never lost their natural childhood curiosity about the world. Kids who lose that curiosity, usually around middle school. Uh-oh, if you're watching in your middle school, teachers, mm -mm, get your peeps back, become normal adults. But kids who retain that curiosity eventually become scientists, either in their hearts, like me, or in their professions. So even as you grow older, never stop being a kid. 
This will guarantee that the world, even the universe itself, becomes and remains your playground of curiosity. And that's from Mr. Neil Tyson himself. So if you've never heard about Mr. Neil Tyson, I'm going to tell you all about him. Here we go. Miss Duke says, stay curious. She's right. On an autumn afternoon in 1958, where was I in 1958? Not even a thought. In the city of New York, on the third planet out from the sun, in the Milky, in the Milky Way galaxy, a little boy was born. Man, if that's not a great birth contract. That's really good. Hi, Mike. Yes, it's special story time tonight. Yes. And hi, Lydia Hahn. Hi, Dr. George. Lydia and Donna Soville, Louisiana. I love to see my Louisiana bleeps. Hello, hello. Hi, Miss McCullough. Neil deGrasse Tyson opened his eyes, and there it was the universe just waiting to be discovered. It's not really in this bedroom, but I'm keeping it on the ground. At first, Neil's world was small. His building blocks and little books, his yo-yos and gyroscopes. During the days, Neil went to school, to the park, and to museums. At night, he looked out the window of his apartment building and saw other buildings, streets, and streetlights, and here and there, small bits of the sky. Until, oh, what's happening? That's true, always be you, that's right. What happened? One day, Neil went to New York City's famous Hayden Planetarium. As he sat beneath the high arc of the theater, out went the lights and shazam, waza! Neil's mind was launched into outer space. In a single instant, his world expanded a hundred times, a thousand times, even more. Projected on a huge dome above his head was the night sky with countless thousands of stars. A gigantic, spectacular, beautiful cosmos Neil never knew existed. And in that moment, his life changed forever. I remember crawling into the planetarium. Of those of you that get to sit in chairs, we crawled into this big, massive aluminum colored bubble. But I love it. Hi, Miss Gauthier. Neil started reading everything he could about planets, moons, and stars. He wondered where comets come from. What makes galaxies spin? And how big is outer space? He learned the word astrophysicist, the kind of science who studies all these things, the kind of scientist he wanted to become someday. Neil passed it, glow in the dark stars all over his paste. It. There we go. I should have read it. I don't read it above, uh, before, so let me fix that. Neil pasted glow in the dark stars all over his ceiling and the shapes of the constellations. At night, with the lights out, it felt as though his bed were floating in the huge magnificence of space. So look at that. Could you imagine? After exploring the skies with binoculars and a small telescope, Neil was determined to get a bigger, more powerful telescope to bring the heavens even closer to his eyes. Hi, Phyllis. And he figured out just how to do it. The dogs. For two entire years after school, Neil walked neighborhood dogs, big ones, small ones, fluffy ones, scruffy ones. At 50 cents a walk, he worked hard and finally got his telescope. 50 cents a dog. Mm, that's wanting something bad, bad, bad. Night after night, Neil carried his heavy telescope up to the roof of his building. Nervous neighbors called the police to report a tall burglar with a dangerous weapon. What if it's just Neil? Ms. Mackin said, great illustrations. Love the graphics. When the officers arrived, Neil explained it was a telescope and showed them the beauty of his favorite planet, Saturn magnified 100 times its golden glow, its icy rains, and many moons. So although they arrived with fear and suspicion, they left with awe and wonder. They thought they were coming to arrest somebody. <laughs> Little did they know, hi, Riley. Hi, Anastasia. I love it too. Because of his passion for astronomy, Neil won a scholarship for a voyage across the Atlantic Ocean to view a total solar eclipse. Hi, Corey. Surrounded by stargazers, researchers, and scientists, Neil was beginning to find his people, his future. 
Then at only 50, Neil was invited to give his first astronomy lecture. He was paid $50, which equaled 100 dog walks. Y'all said bingo. And made him realize he could actually make a living by talking about the universe he loved so much. $100, $50, talk about astronomy at 50 years old. That's a lot of money. Hi, Patrice. In college and graduate school, Neil's mind traveled further than it ever had before. Flying into outer space with runaway stars, diving into the cores of black holes and leaping from galaxy to galaxy. And when Neil wasn't being his cosmic self, he enjoyed being his dancing self, oh, like me, his wrestling self, not like me, his picture taking self, not like me, or most of all, his laughing, laughing self. Yeah, Neil, we got a lot in common. Hi, Yolanda. When Neil graduated, he made sharing the wonders of the cosmos his world. As a teacher, a researcher, a writer, he wrote a magazine column in the made-up character of Merlin, a five billion year old visitor from Andromeda Galaxy who answered people's questions about astronomy and cosmos. Then Neil got what just might be the coolest job on earth. He became, oh, what did Neil become? The director of the Hayden Planetarium, planting the seed. He planted that seed when he was little. And the very place that expanded Neil's world so many years before, it became his turn to expand ours. Today in his dazzling sky shows, Neil takes us to the edges of the universe, inside the center of stars and back to the beginning of time. Right back to his childhood. Who neat is that? Not only does Neil bring us to the stars in the sky, but through books and tours, TV and radio shows, he has become a star himself right here on Earth. A superstar of science shining his bright light on the secrets of the universe. And look at him out on all those TV screens. So cool. Neil believes everyone should have their mind blown at least once a day. And he does his best to make sure that happens. And he has lots of facts on here. I'll give one that he has. If Earth didn't have an if Earth didn't have an atmosphere to scatter the sunlight, the daytime sky would be as black as night. Mm. Outer space is completely silent because there's no air there. It has nothing for sound to travel through. Never thought about that. Someone could shout right in your ear and you wouldn't hear a thing. Well, I thought I was going to read one fact, but this is some good stuff. Neutron stars are the densest stars in the universe. They are so dense that one teaspoon of a neutron star would weigh more than 20 million elephants. That's a lot of weight. In five billion years, the sun will expand and grow so large that will it engulf the Earth and all the planets in the solar system. Five billion years. We got time, people. We got time. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Calvin. Shooting stars are really meteors entering Earth's atmosphere, and most of them are smaller than a blueberry. If you get close to a black hole, your body will be sucked into it and stretched and stretched as you disappear into its depths, which is called being spaghetti -fied. Let me just stay away from black holes. There are more stars in the universe than grains of sand on all the beaches in the world. Black holes may contain whole other universes because it sucked them up. Look at all those cool facts. The wonders of the universe are always with Neil, day and night. At the beach, Neil thinks about the eight minutes and 20 seconds that sunbeams take traveling through space at the speed of light to land on his nose and toes to warm his earthly body. When Neil sees stars through his window at night, he thinks about how their light took thousands of years to get here and that there are no newborn stars whose light won't get to Earth for a thousand or more years into the future. Invisible stars for now. Then he closes his eyes and goes to sleep in his beloved cosmos. As my great nephew Raleigh does, he goes to sleep when he's awake all the time. Yes, Mr. Savannah, what amazing facts that most of us never knew of. Great story. You're right. Hi, Ms. Chapman. As much as Neil loves the amazing facts of the universe, he is also fascinated by the mysteries and the unknowns, the just beginning to be knowns and the barely unknowns. 
barely known. The mysterious pull of invisible dark matter, the push of dark energy expanding our universe ever larger, even faster, ever faster, and wormholes. The faster than light passageways through space and through time. All the mind-blowing secrets that will be explored by the next generation of scientists and the next, perhaps you. Even if you're not a kid, you can still become a scientist. One simple wish Neil has for the future is that all of us, every person on earth, go outside at night and look up, look up, look up at the moon, stars and planets. And think about the fact that we're all made of the very same stuff they are of the stardust atoms of long ago exploded stars. And they were all part of the very same thing, this amazing, beautiful, spectacular, mind-blowing universe that is our home. That is our world. That is us. Riley said he was pretending, he's actually pretending to snore at the same time. That's Riley, falls asleep. Oh, he's awake. So that great, great book. And then he has a glossary in the back. For those of you that would like what his words mean. So in 2017, he actually wrote this book. Um, so that's pretty cool. So that's this book. Look up with me. I actually have a telescope. And if anybody can help me work it, we've been having it for since November. We kind of see stuff, but we're working on it. But this book just encouraged me to not give up on my telescope. So that's book number one. And what a good book. I can't wait to do my takeaways. So my second book, for all my girls, did a boy book. Now for all my girls, let me get a whoop whoop because we're going to read The Fresh Princess, words by Deneen Milner and pictures by Gladys Jose. So there we go, Fresh Princess. And if you're thinking, that sounds familiar, it is because it's based off of Will Smith's The Fresh Prince. And this little author, where well, the author met Will Smith, and if you Google it, you'll see tons of videos with her and Will Smith. I wasn't so lucky to get him, but or her. But hey, I tried. But they couldn't be here. But guess what I have for you? Come and get your AR points. So AR quiz number 50883, book level 3.5 as a third grade at the fifth month, half of a point. So we got our books, a so whoop whoop for the boys and whoop whoop for the girls. Look, I got one whoop whoop. That's right. And boys, you can still whoop whoop because that first book was all about boys. But remember, anybody can be anything in any one of these books. So here we go. Fresh Princess. Fresh Princess by Denise Milner, illustrated by Gladys Jose. And look at the sass in this picture. Can't wait to read it. Can't wait to read it. Here we go. This is the AR book. The information is there. This is Destiny. Her dad calls her princess his fresh princess. Remember, there's a lot of dads that call their daughters princess. That's his princess. Destiny likes a lot of things that princesses like. Poofy dresses and sparkly shoes, shiny crowns, her princess throne, and her loyal subjects, too. Look at her loyal subjects. First up, Alps. She's also really good at being really fresh. That means she's brave, has her own style, and is super smart. She smiles like a new penny. Most days, being fresh is a good thing. Like when Destiny's big sister Marley teaches her how to double dutch and Destiny jumps and trips and struggles and jumps back in again, cool as she pleases, until she's got it lit. Today, Fresh Princess is not feeling fresh at all. That's because her family is moving to a new house in a new city. It is far away from everyone she knows and everything she loves. Destiny is not happy about that. Look at her friend. <laughs> her dad tries to make it all better. That is his thing. Boo-boos get band-aids, belly aches get soft rubs, sleepy heads get good night kisses. On this day, getting back to feeling joyful takes way more work. Her heart will need more to fill in the empty spaces where her happy used to be. There we go there. Destiny perks up a little bit when she sees her new room. 
it has potential, she says to herself. She imagines the magnificent city she'll build there, the fancy luncheon she'll host, and a new throne that will be the centerpiece of her new castle. So she's picturing her room. Destiny finds a new favorite place where the daylight greets her every morning and the stars wink at her at night. She perks up a little more when she looks outside. Destiny listens to the rhymes as the double Dutch rope skips a beat across the concrete. Blue bells, cockshells, Evie, Ivy, over. The jumpers swing their hips and watch the ropes. Then they take flight. Destiny thinks it might be fun to jump in, but those kids are good, really good. So for now, she just watches. Her dad wants to help his fresh princess feel at home, so he invite, invites her on a big adventure. One of his favorite things to do when he was a kid in his neighborhood was to ride the L train. Speeding at the top of the city made me feel like the king of the world. Dad says, let's go see your new kingdom. Sorry, Miss Levy runs and I was on Google Me. Shaking my head. That's all right, Miss Pollard. That's all right. Teachers working after hours. Madam, your royal carriage. Destiny takes dad's hand, climbs the steps, and prances down the aisle to her royal seat. She giggles as the train picks up speed, whistling and whirring through West Philadelphia. Along the way, Destiny's dad points out love letters tucked on the buildings, rooftops, and spines. Keep your head to the sky, Fresh Princess, he says as they roll on by. Destiny waves and blows kisses as the buildings salute her passing by. She does love what she sees, but still, she aches for home. And the words on the building says, look at the beauty around you. Be the change you want to see. Peace and love. Love the best things on the other side of fear. The best things are on the other side of fear. Find your muse. Look at that. So he's showing all the good words. Back at their new place, the kids are playing double dutch again. One of the girls flashes a smile and invites her to join. Destiny says, no thanks. She is not ready for her public. Not yet. Maybe soon. I just want to say, come on, Destiny, jump in. But she can't hear me. Why are you not playing double dutch, asks Marley. You're just as good a jumper as anybody here, she says with a smile. What if I fall flat on my face, asks Destiny. It wouldn't be the first time. Plus, you just get back up. You're the princess. You're the fresh princess. Destiny thinks about this and realizes she can do it. So she grabs her sparkly sneakers and decides to get out there and show them how it's done. Oh, Destiny, let's get it, let's get it. Can you jump, asks one of the girls. She says her name is Mari or Mary. Destiny gives a slow yes. Come jump with us, says Mari. Mari introduces Destiny to the block. There is Shani and Estetti, Zoe and Zion, Miles, and two Lilas. One's a dog and one's a girl. Finally, it's her goal. Destiny takes her place next to the ropes as the turners swing their arms. Cinderella, dressed in yellow, went upstairs to kiss her fellow. Destiny takes a deep breath, swings her hips to the beat, and like the fresh princess, jumps in. And the happiness she feels in this very moment, jumping high and free, surrounded by her new friends, is the precious of all. So those were our two books. Great books. The first book, Look Up With Me. The second book, Fresh Princess. So this was our kickoff to more than a month. So my takeaway from Look Up With Me, his child, he went to a planetarium when he was a child. And because his educators kept talking about science over and over, it never left his head. And so when he grew up, he went right back there and got his job right back there. I'll tell you a story about Dr. George. 
Let me take this off so you won't think that this is the AR book for this. This is for the second book. So let me hide this. This is the book I'm talking about. Look up with me. So when I was at Central Medical Magnet High School, I was an assistant principal. And you can ask Dr. Rice. You know Dr. Rice. He's the principal at Paul Brown. And we were sitting there and he had gotten the principal's job and I didn't. And I felt so defeated, so very defeated. And I told him, I said, you watch, I'm going to get a principal job and I'm going to be famous. You watch. We always talk about this, not really knowing that I would be. And then Tucked in Tuesdays happened, something so small because I planted that seed and spoke that affirmation. And now you can Google my name and see me on TV and see my name when you Google. But the intention wasn't that. It was just that I spoke it into existence and I believed in it. Now, I didn't know it would really happen, but I said it and it happened. And he just stayed invested in his dream. So, Mr. Neil Tyson, wonderful, wonderful takeaway. And one of my best things in his book that he talks about is how he talks about space. He talks about it as if he's the only one that's ever seen it. Because the things we love, we talk about them like that. So love that book. Love, love that book. Second book is Fresh Princess. And this is our AR book. So I'm going to put that up there. This is our AR book, The Fresh Princess. My takeaway on here is not about her moving to a new city. Uh -uh. Has nothing to do with her moving to a new city. That was just nice to have in the book. The true story with her is the double dutch. Something that she saw and she wanted to do, but she was so very afraid. She was in a new place. Nobody knew her, but she wanted to do it. She got a little encouragement. She went out there, got a little closer, and then they invited her in. So if there's something you want to do and you think, I can't do it, they won't let me do it. If you don't try to do it, nobody will help you do it. So if there's something you've been wanting to do and you go, I don't think I can do it, do it. Hi, Tony. Do it. Simply do it. If it's legal, do it. Boys and girls and adults, sometimes we are our biggest enemy when we want to do something. So make sure that if you have a dream, you follow through with it. You don't give up. Stay in the game. That's why he was able to work at the planetarium he visited as a child. And that's why she was able to double dutch. So I want to tell you guys. Special, special, special things are going to happen this month. Dr. George worked extremely hard to get lots of authors. So I'm going to share my screen just a second because I want you to see and I want you to talk about because one of them was on here earlier and he may have gotten off. So let me go to share my screen. Ba -ba -ba. There we go. There's no audio to share. So I'm going to share right there. All right. I'm going to go to my Homer Drive Facebook page. And there it is. So Tucked in Tuesdays presents Black History Month more than a month. So it shouldn't be confined to a month. So I read today that was my kickoff of Black History Month. Now, Tuesday, tomorrow, February 2nd. 7.30 p.m., same time, same place, comfort of your own home, in my PJs, featuring Calvin Denson and Melissa Boyd. So both of those authors will be here. Calvin Denson is local. Both of them will be on tomorrow night. I'm so excited. Tuesday, February 9th, 7.30 p.m. Central Time will be Chevelle Ford and Carol Rutherford. So Carol Rutherford is a... She has um, uh, a book, um, When Grandma Sings, I believe is her book. So she's from New York, I believe. I may be wrong, but no, she's not from New York. I think she's from Kansas, but they'll both be on. And then High Rolling, he put some flames. I guess he's telling me I'm fire. So Tuesday, February 16th will be. Joshua Dickerson and Marguerite Mitchell. So Joshua Dickerson is the, he wrote the poem, I Ain't Got a Pencil, and you all saw it shared and everywhere. And then he wrote a children's book, 
So he did visit Homer Drive. So, and Marguerite Mitchell is another author that will be on there. And Tuesday, February 23rd, 7.30 p.m., Belinda Mays, she's from here, and Buella Steptoe. She's the daughter of John Steptoe. So her dad is deceased, but she's the, uh, the model in the book. So she'll be on there as well. So you'll get to meet the daughter of an author. And so I think I have more down here. Let me see if I can see it. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. And I think there's one more. Let me exit my full screen. And I think that's it. Let's see. I think that's it. All of those. So we'll have that going on. So I'm very, 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 very excited about that. And you'll get to meet all of those African-American authors with African-American characters. And you guys need to see African-American people in a positive light because there's so many good things that African-Americans are doing. So I want to stress that seeing them in a positive light. And the next thing coming up next month, I'm very excited about because the entire district is reading a book, the third, fourth, and fifth grade. I think it's Fenway and Hattie. Well, Dr. George pulled a few strings. And I got that author, too. So at the end of March, if you are reading that book in third, fourth and fifth grade, you are going to meet that author at the end of March on Tucked In Tuesdays. So well, lots and lots of cool things happening. Guys, remember, do your very best. Be who you are, but be the best that you can be, whatever you are. Have a great night. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I forget to say that, but I'll see you guys tomorrow for the real Tucked In Tuesdays. Remember. Celebrate this month, celebrate yourself, celebrate others that look like you during the month of African-American. Yes, great reads tonight. Thanks for sharing. So make sure that we celebrate all the good things that's going on with African-Americans during the month of February. And hopefully we can do that in the March because there's so many people we can't even celebrate it all in the month of February. If nobody else tells you, hello, Miss Diggles and hello, Miss Flowers. If nobody else tells you, Miss Tony said, great lineup. Miss Pollard says, BG Magic. It is BG Magic. If nobody else, well, if a kid, if it's for a kid, I probably can. I'll jump through hoops to get it done. Or a teacher. If nobody else tells you, Dr. George loves you. Have a great rest of your evening. Good night.